In this video, we're going to look at the hardware options within ColorSpace. Uh, they exist within the profiling window and is where you can select the hardware that ColorSpace integrates directly with. That includes displays, um, external signal generators, LUT boxes. So we have connected to um, this system an ASUS display. And if we go in and select connect, there's no need to select a serial port or network address because it's a direct connect device. And you can see that it finds the, uh, the display and connects to it and the options become active. Uh, in this instance, we have the option as to where we upload the calibration data and also the user slot that we are using on the display, either one or two SDR or one or two HDR. We have an option for the calibration patches because the ASUS has an inbuilt uh, TPG. It only has full frame calibration patches, so the options we have are just automatic and full. Automatic uses the settings uh, preset within color space for patch size position if the display or the, the patch generator is compatible with them. Uh, because the ASUS is only full frame, then only full frame data will be used and anything set here that is not compatible is just ignored. Um, you obviously can set things like patch scale um, and obviously for the patch scale you can set the uh, range for full range video um, or data um, or any variation thereof or manually set whatever it is that you want back into hardware and the first function that is done pretty much uh, on any connected hardware that has LUT capability is to upload a Unity Bypass LUT. Now this doesn't necessarily upload a physical LUT. It may if the TPG, the display, um, the LUT box in question requires a full LUT to be loaded to set it to bypass. If the API SDK includes the ability to just tell it to go into bypass mode and reset any other parameters, then that is what the upload function will do. Um, if you want to avoid that, if you only want to, uh, for example, uh, reset the 1D Pre on the ASUS, the way of doing that is to not upload a Unity bypass, but to actually make a Unity LUT using the LUT generation and we can just go into the um, add LUT new, and that gives us a Unity LUT. That is now held in the library as a Unity LUT, because it has no data. And now, under LUT bypass, we have Unity LUT. That can now be uploaded into the display, and that will just reset what we have selected as the slot to load that LUT into. Obviously, when you've generated a calibration LUT, uh, that will also appear in the drop-down list, and you can obviously choose where to um, upload to. Uh, 1D and 3D, if available, will separate out the grayscale part of the LUT generated within the LUT generation tools, and upload that independently to the 3D um, color component of the LUT. So split them into uh, two parts during the upload process. If you want to just upload the entire LUT into the 3D slot, you can. That will ignore uh, a set the separating process and load the entire LUT into the 3D LUT slot. Or you can obviously upload the pre and post 1D components. Again, these are all specific to the hardware you're connected to. So as a user, you must know what your hardware is capable of and read the associated user manual to understand the commands available. OK, while we're connected to the uh, ASUS, we could open up a, another profiling window because we could select different hardware to connect to. Now, this window tells us that the ASUS is busy because it's connected on this window. But we have got, in this instance, a 6G available, which is on COM3, and I will connect to that. And the minute again, we connect all of the various options for the 6G become active. 
but this time the select LUT options are greyed out because a 6G has no LUT capability. But it does have different functions for the patch generation, including presets, small, medium and full sizes, as well as custom. And custom gives you the ability to set the patch area directly within the 6G, as well as the background colour for the patch generator. Um, or to select the automatic uh, sizes for the patches, which as before are set within the settings options of colour space, where you can set the patch size using the L numbers or select uh, area size uh, and position X and Y uh, directly, and again set the background colour if applicable for the uh, attached uh, test patch generator. As with the uh, Asus or any other hardware, the auto tick box will automatically connect back to that hardware when the window is reopened if the hardware is available, as in if it is physically plugged into the Color Space PC. It just means that if you're using the same patch generator all the time or using the same connected display all the time, you can automatically reconnect to them when the window is reopened. Of the options that you have within the different hardware, um, as said, these are specific to the hardware in question, and as a user you need to read the associated user manual to understand what these do and how they are applied through Color Space controlling the specific hardware. If there are specific options that are different, they will be listed in the associated user guides on the Light Illusion uh, website. So if we look at, for example, the 6G, it will take us to the integration page and there will list anything that is slightly different. There will be more information added um, as such unique capabilities um, are added into the uh, Color Space software.